Hey guys, and welcome back to Viva La Resistance, our Star Wars Resistance recap show right here on Dedicated Art. I'm your host today, Chris Zoman, and as you guys see, it's we're going back to traditional, how how it was when this show started, because unfortunately, uh, Nico, who um, was is uh, in the middle of his Thawne uh, event, you know, the thing he's been working on for months, uh, you know, he, he, he's wrapping that up, you know, and he's going to need like two days to recover from that. So, but it's a shame because he's missing out on a great episode. Once again, I'm Chris Doman. That's Case Cornelius. Uh, and today's episode, we have the core problem. Ha 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 ha. Because I'll be honest, this episode was nothing like I was expecting. No, it but, wasn't. But, but Case, walk me through your initial thoughts on the core problem. Oh, I love it. It's a great episode, and it's exactly uh, what you need. It's not not at all what I expected either. Uh, then again, I didn't really know what to expect besides, of course, that I knew this is the episode where we're going to have Poe retrieve BB-8, um, which happened. Yay. We knew that. Mention of Jakku gets mm. uh, just everything like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, I freaked out when I heard that. Um, but yeah, it was a great episode. I am. Uh, I, I feel sorry for Nico that right that this weekend he has the thumb thing. Uh, he couldn't have had that like last week, for example, which was not that great of an episode. Because that's the thing. Like if I compare last week's episode to this week, this is exactly what you need just before your big season finale, which we know is coming. Next week is going to tie into The Force Awakens. I know that next week, when I'm done watching Resistance, I will put in The Force Awakens on my Blu-ray and watch The Last Jedi probably after as well, because it's it's going to tie in, and I want to see how that factors in. Uh, but this episode, uh, Poe comes in, uh, tries to retrieve BB-8, but before he does, uh, Poe uh, po and Ka Cass go on a mission. Uh, once again, BB-8, CB-23, yay. Yay. Uh, I was saying, and before you uh, do too much of my job for me, though, I do appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, so it starts off, um, you know, where Poe somehow managed to get on the Colossus, and he's there in person, which was which is kind of a kind of a refreshing change of pace, you know, versus the, you know, two-second clips we had seen of him when he wasn't, like, actually there, like in Signal from Sector 6, or... Um, uh, the other episode, he made a quick appearance in, and I'm blanking. Uh, Sicko for six to six, he was in. Well, yeah, but, but 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 I mean, like you know, just a quick one of those quick like two minute cameos he was in. Mm. If, yeah. Or for example, the first episode, yeah. <laughs> Touche. You know, um, and it's it was really refreshing to to see him actually come in and just. Not even like get into how did he get through the first order security because as we've now seen, the first order has the damn place on lockdown. Yeah, and Tie fighters all around. Tie fighters are all around. Stormtroopers are just crawling all over the place, and well, how they get out of the Colossus is actually quite brilliant. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it, even though it was a little predictable in terms of the joke. Because, like, I knew that once they detached from this cargo ship that Kaz flew the <clears throat> the fireball onto, and then, of course, you know, they drop off it, and then they free fall for a little while. It's like, oh, and of course, the fireball's not going to start up because it's a piece of junk. And he's going to start up at the last second. <laughs> you know, but, you know, and that was fun. That was cute. But then, there was one joke that you really enjoyed there, though. Oh, yes, there was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm actually uh, uh, I'm trying. I'm sadly I can't quite. Oh, I did not. Not remember what it is. So yeah, it's so, the Widowmaker. Yes. So 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 Yeager, uh Once uh you know Poe sums up his plan to get them off the station. Yeager's like, "You're not pulling a Widowmaker, are you?" And then Kaz is like, "What are you talking about? I've never been married." <laughs> And it's like, it's the dumbest line, but the way he said it was just so it just, it just funny. It worked. It really worked, yeah. Now, so so now these two are off, and they're off to go investigate what's going on in this one little sector where, uh, where, where Kaz thinks that a lot of First Order activity is happening. Now, Poe and Kaz get out there, 
But what's the first thing you notice? There's nothing there. There's nothing there. And most importantly, they mentioned that there is no sun. And of yeah. course, at that point, I was like, oh, she, oh. Uh, yeah, you, you, you know, you know, you know what, you know yeah, what happened. You, you know what happens. And Have you seen the Force Awakens. Do you know what Star Killer Base does? Yeah, and then so that, you also, really and I love that the, the, I love that they give us the visual of seeing planets that have been completely cored out. Now, because when I heard the episode of the title of the Core Problem, my first thought went to. The the like core a power, of the yeah the power core of the class or the core of Castellon, <clears throat> but no, it was, was referring something. to the cores core. of these planets that have been hollowed out by the First Order, and that's the thing. I didn't need to see the First Order do that, but just seeing the visual of the damage already done, yeah, that spoke volumes. Especially yeah, what, I, what I also love. Uh, yeah, what what I just loved about uh, the beginning uh, was that yeah we haven't seen Cass report to Poe in a while, and now he finally does it, and Poe is actually like, oh, you're actually onto something. Uh, your what you've been doing is actually important, and that's why uh, Poe po is initially just there to retrieve BB-8 and go off uh, on his mission, but then uh, Cass shows him uh, what we have learned in the last episode. And Poe's like, okay, that's actually more serious, and he should probably report that to General Organa. So I wonder how that will factor into the next episode. Um, and then, yeah, indeed, you see what the First Order has done, and Poe sees that. Now, the thing was, uh, would it have been nice to see Starkiller Base? Yes, but it doesn't make sense, because Poe doesn't know Starkiller Base. If, if you see the movies, he doesn't recognize it, he doesn't know about it up until he finally gets there. So well, I was like, even yeah, though he is the it. one who pulls up the information on it, and yeah, but on, on it's because of it's because of uh, uh, Snap's recon flight to uh, so up until that recon flight, they don't know exactly what it is. So that's yeah, Touché. Uh, I, yeah. I'm very happy that they have the continuity. Yes, continuity. Ah, uh, uh, one of the main reasons I am still continuing to love this show, uh, <laughs> and. One of the, you know, and then of course we we got we were led to a very fun scene uh, involving a gravity well <clears throat> inside one of the cored out planets, and you know it's like, oh, you know this is gonna get brought back at the end, which it is. We'll get there in a moment. But then once again, mm -hmm. on the other side of the gravity well, uh, they go to this abandoned they they go to this abandoned moon, and you just see death and decay everywhere. It's sort of like. Uh, you know, as I was watching this episode with Case, I made a joke. It reminded me of uh, the village in Mulan. You know, the yeah. one where Shan Yu says, "The little girl will be missing her doll. We should return it to her." You know? Yeah, and yeah. And honestly, when I saw the planet, um, I um, I, I was I've watched it twice. Once with you, once with uh, my girlfriend. Uh, so when I was watching it the first time, I uh, said to her. Wait, keep watching. And I quickly pulled up uh, a comic because I honestly thought that the planet looked something like we've seen in uh, the Doctor Afra comic. I was wrong, uh, but it was it was mm -hmm. funny. Like uh, it did look like some kind of a temple um, that might have been one day been something glorious that Doctor Afra would probably check out because she's the ar uh, archaeologist. So that would have been a nice reference. Um, would have didn't, di didn't happen, but. Yeah, that, that was where my mind went to when I saw the planet. <laughs> Actually, yeah, now that that was kind of a missed opportunity, then wasn't it? Because that would have been really fun. But oh, well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> but that wasn't the point because you know then we got introduced to this uh, you know new type of probe droid that had a bunch of mini probe <laughs> droids in it, and it's got children. <laughs> Kid, it's got kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a that was a fun little line. Um, I mean the design of it was fun. Uh. But, you know, I was just like, eh, first order trying to overcompensate for the Empire. Woo. Um, this this has been happening in the movies anyway, so. Yeah. I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. So, but then, of course, it, so it did get out of stress signal, and then in comes Captain Von Reck and some of his TIE fighters. Major the, Von Reck. Oh, whatever. Franks. Franks. 
Who cares? Who cares anyway, right? Oh, wait, wrong show. <laughs> wrong show. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, then they go off on a fun little dog fight and uh, they actually go back through the gravity well and it takes out all of Major Von Rex, uh TIE fighters except for him. And, you know, I, I part of me wishes that if there could have been like five more minutes with this episode. That there could have been a great dogfight between Poe and the Major, and maybe this would have been the Major's glorious end. But on the other hand, I am glad he is still around, so that we. I think can... I think he'll factor into uh, next season, probably, probably, or at least the next episode. Yes, well, well for sure, the next episode, but uh, next season probably. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, it ends with uh, just just this, you know, most bittersweet moment where. You know, they have to do a little droid swap, Poe and, and mm. Kaz, where now Kaz gets CB-23 and Poe gets his buddy back to go off to Jakku for a little adventure that you'll see in The Force Awakens. Oh, yeah. um, and, you know, as, as they're doing their droid swap in space, you know, CB-23 and BB have just this, the cutest little moment because, you know, of, yep. of course... <laughs> Us being the, the nerdy fans we are, we ship it and we ship it hard. <laughs> um, and just part of me wishes that they weren't in space so that they could have had a cute moment together, mm-hmm. like give give sort of the droid equivalent of a of a midair kiss and then move on. But no, oh, that, it, it reminded me a lot of Wally. Wally, kind of. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Two robots who fall in love. Two robots who fall in love and they float through space and they have this little moment. <laughs> yeah. No, it was uh, hey, um CB23 and BB8. They're just cute and it's fun. And uh, luckily this is uh this was something I said just before we went on air. Luckily this is a ship you can't poke holes in because there are no other Astromax. Exactly. CB23 see, see, is a girl, BB8 uh, is a uh, boy. I was about to say yeah. No, I I I you're not going to hear me yell my famous uh stop blowing holes stop in my ship. Holes in my ship. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um and which uh speaking of as as we start to 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 wrap up the the episode there's a, there's another fun little moment where I feel like Tam's loyalty to uh, to Yeager's crew just got one more test, and I'm oh, pretty sure that next Yeager. episode is what's going to push her over the edge into actually falling into the temptation of the First Order. Well, that's kind of the thing. Um, like throughout uh, the season, we have been like, "Oh my God, Tam's going to be taken away." Uh, by the first order. What if that's willingly? I mean, uh, Tam. So, Tam so far has not shown any kind of uh, thing that she hates the first order. No, she likes them. She thinks that they're good. And even though uh, she definitely should, after especially well, after she, the last episode. Uh, well, still in the last episode, she says, "But they can't be all evil, right? They can't just be what uh, Cass is making them out to be." She still does not really fully believe that. And especially in this episode where Yeager uh, will not tell her what's up. Yeah, at one point she's going to uh, she's gonna just say, okay, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm going to do my own thing uh, because I think the First Order is good. So what if it's that she goes with them willingly? And that will be something. Um, all I know is I cannot wait for the next episode Knowing what's to come, we saw stuff in the trailer, and I've been looking uh, forward to this. Mm-hmm. And especially th- this episode really gets me excited for that because this was the perfect episode to have just before the season finale. Because you know where it's going. We all know where it's going. We all know course. where it's going. Um, so that's just awesome, uh, so, and I can't wait. I can't wait for next. So, week. <laughs> and, and actually, and, and before we do that, uh, which by the way, for, for the for next week's episode, the season one finale, known as the disappeared. Which isn't that just hey, like, Tam. That's just a great title. I love that. Yes. So, <clears throat> let's speculate for a couple of minutes here. Sure. How how much are we looking forward to seeing them on an adventure on Starkiller Base? I don't know about that. I uh, think so. Honestly. Uh, I don't know why you're exactly get, getting that idea. Well, isn't that where... Well, presumably, once Tam, whether willingly or forcibly, goes with the First Order, that's where they're going to take her. Yeah, I think... 
I'm not sure if they're going to be able to pull that off because, hmm. like, all the events of the Force Awakens are pr- are just within the span of two or three days, not that much days. Um, so really, uh, there, there's not a lot to uh, if like Ray gets to uh, Ray gets there, Finn, uh, Finn, and every uh, uh, Han and Chewie uh, try to save her, and also the Resistance comes there too. I don't think that besides that you can have the storyline with Tam Kaz and everything. I don't I don't think so. I think that the First Order will take her uh, somewhere else, uh, maybe just to start a story, maybe to finalize her. Because uh, that's the oh. thing. Starkiller ba- Star- we know Starkiller Base gets blown up. Yep. So there is not much you can do there. I think that it will be more along the lines where they take her somewhere that doesn't get blown up and you can actually do something, like a finalizer. Uh, which, by the way... For people who don't know, uh, the finalizer is the name of Kylo Ren's Star Destroyer, or just another. How about the supremacy with Snoke? Because we know that that one is still at least around a little bit longer. Uh, Not that much, but still a little bit longer than Star Killer. About about two or three weeks longer. Yeah. So uh, that means that. uh, Yeah, I I just know that if Tam is indeed gonna go uh, with the First Order to some place. And Kaz is going to go after her. Um, who will he take? Uh, what will happen on the Colossus itself? Uh, because I, I think uh, that Kaz will have the hardest time getting off the Colossus. He will need everyone. And someone may die in the process. Uh, and I think that... Uh, yeah, I de- definitely hope that he calls on Tora for help. Because I just want more of Kaz and Tora. We have not seen that much of them together. But what Lately. we see... No. We, yeah, lately not. But what we've seen, and especially in the, in, in the first half, uh, one of the last episodes of the first half, uh, they, had a, yeah. Yeah, they had a very nice uh, episode. And I think, hey, uh, what if he calls on her because she is a skilled pilot, a skilled person, per, uh, period. So I want to see uh, I want to see that together. Go on an adventure after Tam. I think that could be really fun. Could be awesome next week. I think I absolutely would, and actually, you, you took a lot of my my points. So I'll just I'll, I'll keep I'll keep it. No, no, that's good. Like I'll keep this short. I I do actually believe they'll go to Star Killer Base, but I do also do think that they'll they'll sort of. I feel like they're gonna do with Star Killer Base what we wanted Rebels to do with the Battle of Scarif. Oh, that's how I think they're gonna go about it. But. That's that's just me. But that's either way, crazy. guys, I am so excited. I mean, between... Although, is it sad that I'm looking forward to the season one uh, finale over the Oscars? No, because the Oscars uh, made a lot of bad decisions. And season true. one... like the, the Oscars have done everything wrong to get us excited. And Resistance has been doing everything right to get us excited. So Yes, fair enough. So, guys... Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Viva La Resistance. Uh, once again, I was your host, Chris Doman. That was my co-host, Case Cornelisa. Case, where can the good folks find you online? Uh, Case Cornelius on Facebook and Letterboxd. Uh, at Dutch Movie Guy on Twitter. Uh, competing over at Multiplex. Where, uh, usually, Nico does the entire plex. I'll just say, check out Multiplex. They're cool guys, and I compete there sometimes. So that's uh, about all I can say there. Fair enough. Twitter, Instagram, Stardust, Letterboxd, at Skywalker Doman. You guys can follow this very channel on Twitter and Instagram, at D2A Channel. Please like our Facebook page. And uh, once again, like, comment, subscribe, share it. So that way, uh, maybe uh, after next week, we could uh, talk to some certain people associated with the show. That's a nice thought. Please? Please? One can dream. (laughs) But until then, vive la resistance. May the Force be with you, always. Yeah!